All right, let's look at these questions. In the first question, we are given a projectile and we are asked to identify uh, beta, P, H, and R. Now, this is a projectile motion. So when a body is thrown up and allowed to move freely under gravity, then the body returns. It is referred to as projectile motion. Now, in this projectile, look, look at these points. Y, so that's the Y axis, and this is the S axis. Now, when you throw a stone or an object up, then it moves freely and comes down. This angle here, which is beta, is referred to as the angle of projectile. So this is the angle. And from here to here is the horizontal distance. And horizontal distance is also referred to as range. So this is the range of the projectile. Now, something else, H. From uh, the starting point, to this place this is obviously the height so this is the height or maximum height this is the maximum height of the projectile maximum height so this is a height this is a height this is height and this is height but this is the maximum height the highest height the object gets to now we have p here this p is simply the velocity of the projectile and the b says we should show the relationship between g that's acceleration due to gravity uh p velocity and arrow range so the, rela the relationship between arrow mass that's maximum range acceleration due to gravity and velocity is simply that maximum range is p square over g so that's the relationship between maximum range uh velocity and acceleration due to gravity now the next question says state the three observable phenomena in which waves behave like particle now this question is under wave particle duality in which waves can exist exhibit some particle nature just like matter Matter, we have particle nature of matter and we have wave nature of matter. Phenomenon that shows that waves behave as particles are we have photoelectric effect. We have reflection. We have diffraction. Diffraction. And in fact, polarization and a lot of behaviors. So these are the behaviors which prove that waves behave as particles. Now the next question says, we should explain uh, each of the following terms used in electronics. Okay, the question actually says we should explain uh, holes and electrons. In electricity, we know that electrons are charge carriers. In fact, electricity is the flow of electrons in the conductor. Electron moves in the conductor. And we have the current and we have the voltage. Voltage is actually what pushes the current. If not for voltage, current would have been able to move. That's why we have uh, V is equals I arrow. Current pushes the voltage and it comes across the resistance. So the higher the resistance, the lower the higher the voltage that is required and current is equals voltage over resistance so the lower the resistance the higher the voltage now in electronics or in semiconductors the, uh, the charge carriers are holes and electrons why holes are positive charge carriers electrons are negative charge carriers so all these guys form what is referred to as electron hole pair. And remember that semiconductors generally don't conduct unless impurity is added to them. And this impurity that is added to semiconductors to ensure that they conduct electricity, they are, the process is referred to as 
dopey. Define diffusion and two factors that affect diffusion. Diffusion is simply the movement of molecules, yes, from one place to another. Let's say from a region of higher concentration to a place of lower concentration. And the uh, factors that affect diffusion, it should be mass. The bigger the material, the more it will diffuse. And temperature can also affect diffusion. So with that, we've answered these uh, WAEC theory questions. So let's see what happens next. Define strain. Strain can be defined as the distortion or change in shape and size of a body due to force applied. So strain is simply the effect of force and it is simply extension over length. Now in materials or when you discuss strength of materials, we have stress or tensile stress and we have tensile strain. Tensile stress is simply force per unit area. So force acting per area is simply tensile stress of the body while strain is simply the extension over length and uh, uh, the relationship between stress and strain is simply the Young modulus. Young modulus is the ratio of the tensile stress to the tensile strain which implies that force over area divided by extension over length is simply force times length over extension AE. So that's Young modulus. Explaining that, the second, the B part says a rubber band is stretched twice its original length. So stretch means extension. So extension is equals 2L. So if it's stretched two times its original length, that means this extension is 2L minus the original length. That is the new extension. If that is the new extension, then strain this strain is simply extension that means 2L minus L over length 2L minus L is simply L over L is equals 1 so its uh, original length is 1 since it has been stressed 2 times polycarbonates, uh, teflon sheets and sapphire these are the materials used for optic fibers. And number three says, name three classes of magnetic materials. They are simply uh, paramagnetic materials, diamagnetic materials, and ferromagnetic materials. These are the classes of uh, magnetic materials. What is intrinsic semiconductors? Intrinsic semiconductors are simply pure semiconductors. Semiconductors that have not undergone impurities. Now, semiconductors are simply materials whose conductivity are between that of conductor and insulators. They are in between. And semiconductors in their pure form is referred to as intrinsic semiconductors. They don't conduct electricity in their pure form. For conductors to conduct electricity, for semiconductors to conduct electricity, we need to add impurities to them. So these impurities, the process of adding impurity to semiconductor to make them conduct electricity is called doping. Now, when you dope semiconductors, it conducts electricity. Uh, examples of semiconductors are silicon and germanium. Semiconductors have four electrons in the outermost shell. This implies that they need four electrons to complete their configuration, four electrons to get there to their stable state. And having these four electrons, and we can choose to add trivalent or pentavalent electrons. Anyone we add will determine whether we have a p-type or we have n-type semiconductor 
this takes us to the next question which says that distinguish between the p type and n type semiconductor p type semiconductor is a type of semiconductor formed when the semiconductor is doped with a trivalent impurity trivalent impurity means the impurities or the element it has three electrons in the outermost shell if it has three electrons in the outermost shell it means one would fit here one would fit here and one would fit here so it will remain a hole in uh, in p-type semiconductors we have more holes than electrons so it's positively charged and it is a p-type semiconductor on the other hand when you dope a semiconductor with pentavalent impurities pentavalent impurity means the impurity has five electrons in the outermost shell now if you dope it with this this goes here this goes here this goes here and this goes here we are left with one electrons in that case there is more electrons than whole we call that n-type semiconductors n-type semiconductor is a semiconductor formed when we dope with pentavalent impurities why p-type is formed when we dope with trivalent impurities question five says a missile is projected so as to attain its maximum range calculates the height attained if the initial velocity of the projectile is 2 meter per second take g as 10 meter per second maximum height attained in projectile h is, equal, is simply u square sine square theta over 2g that is the formula for maximum height and from this question it says that uh the initial velocity of proje uh, projection is 200 meter per second so u is equals 200 meter per second and g g is equals 10 meter per second our uh, range range is the horizontal distance between projectile at maximum range the angle is equals 45 degrees that's the angle at maximum range in that case theta is equals 45 degrees maximum height is therefore 200 square sine 45 square over 2 times 10 this will simply give us 200 square is 200 times 200 that should give us uh, 40,000 over sine 45 square over 20. So this is the same thing. This cancels this. This here, 2,000. So maximum range is equals 2,000 sine sine 45 square. This is equal to 1,000 meter which should be equals one kilometer so that is the maximum range of the body this question says a stone of mass 20 kg is released from a catapult whose rubber is stretched through 5 cm if the force constant of the rubber is 20 newton per meter calculate the speed with which the stone leaves the catapult so we are looking for the speed with which the stone leaves the catapult. Now we are giving mass. Mass is equals uh, 20 kg. Uh, this is simply now 0.02 grams. And we are giving the extension. So extension is equals 5 cm, which is 0.05 meter. What we do in this question is we look for a formula that can relate a velocity, mass, extension, and force constant. Looking at this question, two things come to mind. The first is, we know that F is equals half Ke square. We know that 
that's uh, for extension elastic materials we also know that force is equals half mv square if force is equals half k is square and force is equals half mv square it means force is equals force and it also means half k is square is equals half mv square this implies that half k is square is equals half mv square now that we have this we have everything we want we have force constant we have extension and we have mass so let's substitute this would give us half times k 200 times 0 0.05 square is equals half times 0 0.02 times v square so this will give you half times 200 times 0 0.0025 is equals 1 over 2 times 0 0.02 times v square now 1 over 2 divided by times 200 is 100 100 times 0 0.025 will simply give you 0 0.25 so this is equals 0 0.01 v square v square is equals 25 v is equals square root of 25 so therefore v is equals 5 so the velocity of with which the stone leaves the catapult is 5 not just 5 5 meter per second that is the answer to this question thank you for watching my video i am flash isaac feel free to subscribe to this channel flash learners to get my updates on new videos and don't forget to check out my other videos visit flashlearners.com slash videos or search flash tenors on youtube to see my amazing videos for all your topics i really appreciate your time thank you <laughs>